life. And I used to be a patient guy, but I used to think that I'd spend the rest of my life alone. And I didn't want anything more than what I already had. But you, you changed all that. And now I gotta admit, all this waiting around, it's driving me crazy. I mean, sometimes you just gotta stop thinking and do with what's in your heart. So what's your heart saying, man? Hi, I hope I didn't keep you waiting too long. No, I, I just got here a few minutes ago. Well, lunch at the Harbor Club, it must be important. Yeah, I figured there's some things we should talk about. Listen, when the market's open in Tokyo in the morning, I want you on top of this. Right, good. How's the yen look? Yes, long term, always long term. Right. <laughs> okay. Look, do the same numbers we did last week and... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, get back to me later. L listen, hold on! There's, there's someone here. Let me wait just a minute. Listen, uh, let me get back to you. I didn't order room service. Oh, well, technically, I'm not room service. I am here to serve you in any and every way you desire. Ah, anything interesting in the paper? Paper? What paper? Oh, well, the usual. Uh-huh. You don't have to do that. Do what? I know all about the bomb that was dropped at the press conference yesterday. One minute we were celebrating Cass's victory, and the next minute it was all about Anne. Come on. Well, then why read it? So I know what people are saying behind my back. Come on. Hand it over. Oh, oh, front page news. Look at that. Dead ringer. So now the whole town knows that this sainted Frankie's double shows up right before my wedding. And how much money would you like to bet that Miss Anne planned the whole thing? Right. P-R-E-R-O-G-A-T-I-V. Good for you. I've decided right there to prove that I'm a genius who learned from her one mistake. I was going to forge it again, but... Good for you that you didn't. <laughs> Told you I was a genius. Okay, what's wrong? There's something I need to talk to you about, honey. There's a newspaper article in today's paper. And it's about Anne and how much she looks like your mother. And the fact that she's working for me. Why is anybody going to care about that? Mom had a lot of friends here in town, people who loved her and miss her, and to see someone who looks so much like her and who's friendly with us, um, it's unusual. And you think that kids at school are going to say something? It's possible. So, forewarned is forearmed. But what about Anne? What if she gets weirded out by all the attention? What if she decides to leave town again? That would be her prerogative. Honey. Annie is not your mom. No, but there's nothing wrong with liking her. She's funny, she's nice. Yes, yes. And it's not like she's hurting anyone just by existing. This whole situation is confusing for all of us, whether you're genius enough to realize it or not. Trust me. All right. You ready? We're going to miss some bouts. Got everything? Check. OK. Yep. Let's blow this pop stand. Okay. Here, walk this way. And you're still here. Sure I am. Why wouldn't I be? Well, Dad told me about the stuff in the newspaper. I don't know that's the last thing you're going to Yeah, but I'm a tough cookie. I can take a little heat. What about you? Mm -hmm. Same here, all with the punches. Yeah, girl. <laughs> I'm glad you stayed around. Hey, come on, it's time to go. Time, Tide, and Phyllis the bus driver wait for no child. Okay. 
Hey, Einstein. Aren't you forgetting something? I love you. I love you too. Bye. Bye, honey. She's a great kid. I love her so much. Come on in. Did you see the newspaper article? Oh, who could miss it? Look, I, I never wanted any of this to happen. If there's anything I can do to make things easier... Hey, it's not your fault. If I had handled everything differently right from the beginning, none of this ever would have happened. Against my better judgment, what would you have done differently? I used my better judgment and let you leave town the first time you tried to go. Right. Or thrown a big party and introduced you to everybody. <laughs> Taking the bull by the horns. So to speak. I mean, what I did was next to nothing, and that was a mistake. Neither of us wanted the attention. But here we are. An uproar over facial resemblance. I mean, who cares? What's the big deal? You're not Frankie. She's gone. I've accepted that. I'm trying to get on with my life. Lila. She's not too crazy about my being here. We have to find a way to work that out. I don't want Lila to be unhappy. Having her in my life, as exasperating as she can be, it's the first time that I've felt alive since... Uh... Since Frankie died. Yes. I know how committed you are to Lila Cass. Good. But how committed is she to you? What gave you the idea that my private life is any concern of yours? I'm so sorry. Sometimes I don't know when to keep my trap shut. It's just that I can't help but wonder why that ring isn't on Lila's finger. She was pretty mad. Well, pretty mad doesn't quite capture it, actually. I feel awful. With that irritating little go-getter reporter. I, mean, I, I had no idea that she would drop that bombshell at your press Neither conference. did I. What's, what was up with her? I'm sure I don't know. Cass, I want you to be happy. If there's anyone in this world who deserves happiness, it's you. Well, I'm glad you feel that way, because it makes what I have to say a little easier. It sounds ominous. If you really want Charlie and me to be happy, I need you to, uh... What? Disappear? Have you ever been in love with someone and the feeling was so strong that you prayed to everything that was holy that that feeling would last forever? And the thought of life without that person was just unthinkable? Frankie was that for me. And then when I saw your face, and I saw the face that I never had ever thought I'd see again in this I life. Get it. I get it. I'm engaged now to a woman who makes me feel all those things that I never thought I'd feel again. Now, if I've been putting out mixed signals, you I haven't. apologize, or any kind of signals at all. I know that this is a confusing situation for all of us, and I can handle confusing. In fact, it's becoming, it's becoming second nature to me, but when it involves Charlie... She's a bright and wonderful kid. And she's grown attached to you now. I have to be the one to know when the line between Reality and fantasy is beginning to blur, and the reality of the situation is you look exactly like the mother she never got the chance to know. You have to realize what this is doing to Charlie and to Lila. You're right. I, I wasn't thinking... I love Lila. Lila loves me. Of that, I'm absolutely certain. And she and Charlie have the beginnings of a wonderful relationship, and what I love most of, of, about this relationship is that she's not the least like Frankie. And I don't want anything to confuse that or get in the way of that. There's nothing confusing about I can be uh, cleared out and a distant but fond memory in about an hour. I really appreciate this. And I want to thank you for everything you've done, Annie. I, I wish you nothing but the best. Me too. I'll send you my bill. this Miss O'Donnell on a level that you couldn't possibly comprehend. Oh, I think I can understand. <sighs> she is trying to break Cass and I up. I, I mean, and Cass is too stupid or, or blind or well, hoodwinked to see it. Oh, he's not an idiot. Now, I mean, she is playing him. She's playing him. Cass? Yes. Cass? He's not naive. Come on, he knows what he's doing. How many weeks was she working with him and he didn't tell you? Matthew. Hmm? You loved your stepfather, right? I mean, he died too soon. 
If somebody who looked exactly like him walked into the room, would you know what you were doing? No, I No, no. So it would be up to the other person to be decent because you would be too overwhelmed. I mean, Frankie is not my competition. I mean, Cass adored her. He loved her. And it's her love that made him part of what he is and, and what Charlie is. No, no, my problem is live and well, and her name is Ann O'Donnell. Mm -hmm. And she is far more dangerous, and Cass just can't see it. Well, he should have gotten rid of her before the whole story flared up. Uh, well, how was he supposed to do that once she made sure that Charlie got a good look at her? You know, if you were mine, you would never question my feelings for you. But I'm not yours. Have I ever given you any reason to question my feelings for you or no, Jasmine? No, just your sanity. Come on, tell the truth. I threw myself at you for months and months, and you weren't even a little bit interested. You just changed your mind the day I told you that I fell in love with Cass. It's more than that, you know. I think you had better answer that door. Hi, what can I do for you? Corey residence? Oh, yes. I'll uh, uh, need your signature here. All right. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Hmm, what is it? It's from David Halliday. This day just keeps getting better and better. So why don't you sit down, get comfortable, Thank you. I think. Coffee? Let me guess. Scalding hot and strong enough to curl your toes, hmm? Actually, I take it with milk. However you want. Whatever you want. Tempting. That's my middle name. But I'm not the breakfast type. Oh, that's a shame. It's the second best way to start the day. What are you doing here? Um, if, if, if I have to explain that, then I am really doing something wrong. Uh, I've been around long enough to know not to trust a hard sell. Even a tantalizingly sexy one. So why don't you tell me what you're doing here? Huh? The truth. I should warn you, if you're trying to make me not like you, you're having exactly the opposite effect. No explanation? Allow me. You're after my money. And you're willing to barter your breakfast services to get your hands on it. Well, unless you want to settle for a thick-waisted farm girl, I'm the best offer you're going to get for a long time. All the farm girls I know work damn hard for a living, and what they do after hours is for pleasure, not for pay. Get a day job, Cindy. Oh, yeah. Pretty damn easy to judge when you've got money, isn't it? Gives you special privileges, sets you apart. And without it, you're bottom of the food chain. People just step on you and pick at you. You must have some marketable skill. Legal marketable skill. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know what I have to look forward to? Hustling bedpans in an old folks' home. Self-pity routine turns my stomach. There are millions of people far worse off than you that manage to overcome their circumstances without blaming the other guy or uttering the words, why me? Yeah, and I bet you know tons of them, don't you? First hand. Just a few months ago, the feds froze all my assets. Mm-hmm. It's true. Not a cent to my name facing federal charges. So what happened? A miracle. Miracles do happen. Well, then that's a people like Oh, you're luckier than you think. Really? How do you figure that? You found me. Someone who can afford to take on your much-needed rehabilitation as a hobby. As a, what, some twisted experiment? With a brand new twist. No more games. I've been around and seen better. Oh. What do you want? <sighs> Give me something... You haven't shown anyone in years. Give me 
something you say just for yourself. Your true, unadorned self. Leave something to the imagination. Stop the inflatable party doll act. It doesn't do a thing for me. Tone it down and start acting like the real and apparently very intelligent lady that is beneath the artifice. Yeah. Now that's someone I'd like to meet, spend some time with, but not in my hotel room. Not proper. You're catching on. Fine. You're calling the shots, and I got nothing else going, so I guess I am putty in your hands. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think you'll do. Well, let's go. What? I'm starving. Is everything okay? You're not eating. Oh, no, no. Everything's fine. Good. No, everything isn't fine. You still haven't told me why you wanted to meet me here for brunch. Brunch? Oh, it's funny. I, I never knew what brunch was until I started working for your family. Seems like a million years ago. Seems like yesterday. Cameron, if there's something that you want to say to me, can you please just say it? All right. Look, I've been giving it a lot of thought about what you said the other day about needing more time to figure out us, if you even wanted in us. Well, I say the hell with thinking. I want you, you want me, everything else is just... <laughs> no! Hey, what are you doing? Are you crazy? Yeah? Where are you taking me? Someplace nice and quiet. And I'm gonna kiss you, and I'm gonna hold you. And I am not letting you go until we tuck our grandkids in at night. <laughs> Amanda. Well, what do you think? I know what I want. I just don't know if I trust my decision making just yet. What if I... What if I want something that's really going to be bad for me? I mean, I, I'm just not ready to take that chance yet, that's all. I guess that's my answer, then. I don't want to... I don't want to push you. That's the last thing I want to do. Oh. oh. Yes. Uh, you, you know, I'm just going to put a little doggy door in there so you can nudge your nose up again so you won't even have to knock. Get back off, in. Matt. You won't have me to kick around much longer once Lila moves in with me. Oh. Who says I'm going anywhere with you, Cass Winthrop? I, I really should talk to Cass. All right, okay. I'll be at the Harbor Club if you need me. Thank you. Hey, thanks. What, now that he's gone, you're going to give me the silent treatment? Well, I don't have anything more to say. I've already said my piece. I mean, it's either Anne or me. You can't have us both. I don't want both. I want you. I've always wanted you. Well, Only you. Then tell Anne that. I did. You did? Yeah. She's gone. Out of my office, out of my life. I love you. Anne knows that. Charlie knows that. Until recently, you knew that. <laughs> what can I do to convince you? Altogether, sure you can. Oh, ye of little faith. And tempting lips. And silken hair. <laughs> and forgiving heart. Oh. <laughs> and other various and sundry pleasing parts. Please understand. I was a little thrown there for a while. I admit that I never, ever, ever stopped loving you. I will make it up to you. you gotta give me the chance. Please. Oh, gosh. Do 
believe I have a choice. No, none. No, <laughs> I must be crazy. You, you are know crazy, that. crazy in love, just like me. <laughs> You really told her? <laughs> Cross my heart. <laughs> I did. All right, Dan. Put that ring on my finger, sugar, and I swear to God I'll never take it off. Oh, I love you so much. <laughs> I love you so much. Oh. Ow! Ooh. What is so... in there? Ouch. <laughs> Frankie. I'm trying to help them and they won't let me. What do I do now? <sighs> Hello. Uh, yes, sorry. It, it is. It's Winthrop Ben Montgomery. How can I help you? Charlene's all right? At which hospital? Uh, we'll be right there. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Where do you think you're going? We're trying to find some of Rachel's prize bubbly. This is a celebration. <laughs> Okay. Claudia! It is a silly Claudia, we need champagne! Such a pretty ring. Oh, Cass! Hello? Hi. Uh, is Cass there? This is important. Oh, it's you. Well, actually, Miss Ann, I'm glad you called. There's something I've been meaning to tell you. Lila? Uh, you know what? You're a smart girl. You've probably done your homework about me. You must realize that if you push me, I will push back. So why don't you just leave Cass alone? Or I will make you sorry that you ever showed your face in this town. This is important. And I just hope you remember that, for your sake. Done. I thought I heard something. Oh, just a beating on my heart. <laughs> you know, you asked me what I want and where my head is. What about you? What do you want? How do you feel? Like somebody just kicked me in the stomach. Don't worry, I'll get over it. I feel like we... We keep missing each other. You're a couple of feet away from me, and I feel like you're on the other end of the world. I'm starting to feel like I'm losing my best friend. Hi, guys. How you doing? I'm not interrupting anything, am I? Oh, Matt, actually... No, were... it's, it's fine. What do you got? These came express. From Halliday. What's the creep want now? Well... He wants me to buy out his shares of Brava. With interest. Well, maybe that's a good sign. Maybe he's finally packing his bags and leaving town. And sinking Brava before he goes. He knows that I can't come up with the money to do this. Yeah, well, I thought you'd like to know as soon as possible. I don't care what I have to do. I'm not going to lose Brava. Well, any ideas? Well, we could try to find the capital, do what he wants. Where? Call his bluff. Tell him you can't buy him out. Make him think he's going to lose his investment. I'm a really lousy poker player. Besides, he knows me well enough to realize I'm not going to let Bravo go. If you don't stop him, he's going to sell to the highest bidder. Let Cass take care of the legal end. I'll take care of the rest. What are you going to do? I'm going to make sure that creep doesn't get his hands on you again. Cameron, don't. Not here. Can you believe this guy? He dumps these papers on you and then he shows up here to celebrate with that bimbo? I know, I agree, but if you approach him one more time, he's gonna file us all charges. She's right, it's not worth it. Yeah, but it would feel so good. All right, I'll make you a deal. I'll make sure to control my temper if you make sure that he does not get the upper hand, on paper or otherwise. You know me better than that. Guys, you're doing exactly what he wants, reacting, getting your attention. Just calm down a little bit. Looks like he likes to play with fire. 
Cindy, you're back so soon. Guess I'm gonna have to call the exterminator. I hope she's not buying you brunch today. I've closed her account. The lady's here at my invitation. Excuse me, the who? I told you we shouldn't have come here. You look like a very hardworking, intelligent young man. I think you better keep your hand on me while I'm having brunch. Enjoy. Nasty, vindictive sow. I hope you're not going to eat with that mouth. You know, if I had money, I could talk any way I damn well chose, because it's what people respect. How about a clean rap sheet? Skeleton-free closet. Money can buy those things. All right. All right. Hypothetical. Mm -hmm. You have all the money you want. You're financially secure. What do you do? You mean after Paris and Milan? Your true heart's desire. <laughs> I'd just like to be a normal, decent woman. She's respected and in love with the man that she marries, who's a normal, decent guy with a heart of gold. Live in a normal, decent house. Oh, come off it. You'd be bored stiff inside of six months. I beg you a pardon. You can't handle normal and decent. How do you know what I could handle? I could. I could. Care to wager? I would love to. He's doing this to get my attention, and he is about to get all of it. Hey, hey, hey. I'll I go with we you. We weren't going to get into this. I am going to do this alone. Mom entrusted Brava to me, and I'm going to make sure that it stays in print. Even if I have to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him and that makes my skin crawl, I'll be fine. I'll be watching. I know. David? Hi, Cindy. Could I have a minute? Well, actually, I've got my hands full at the moment, you understand? It won't take very long. Well, why not? I'll be right back. I thought we might have a little more privacy for you. Hmm. I get the sneaking suspicion. You didn't get me all to yourself, just so you could tell me about your undying and hidden love for me. Got your papers. I see. If you take your money out of Bravo, you will be sinking the only thing that is really solid in my life. Hmm. You mean I'm supposed to care? What's that guy doing to Amanda? Oh, he's not going to try anything with the two of us here. He better not. He ruined everything for her and me. Just looking for a reason to rip him apart. Here's to you. No, no, no. To you. Cass Winthrop, the best lawyer in town. I'm just glad we were able to clear Paulina's name. Mm. Now, you have to forget about Paulina. What you need is an agent, and you have to start working on that movie of the week deal. <laughs> You're too much, you know that? Well, why? It worked for John Grisham. Why can't it work for you? Lila. No, seriously. This story has everything you need. Ex-senator is murdered. The, the flags are raised at half-mast. All the cast of suspects. Seriously, we can make a fortune off of this one. We can get rich. You're just a big dreamer, you know mm -hmm. that? Mm -hmm. I would share the wealth, you know, with Joe and Paulina. I mean, they want to build that house, and they want to put money away for Dante, and we could build our own. And I really like the way that sounds. We. And what would we do with all that money? <laughs> well, first there's the wedding, you know. Tasteful costs more. <laughs> yes, it does. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking that we could all just go over to Carlino's, you know, and maybe Paulina would work out a deal for us. Spaghetti? For everyone? Are you out of your mind? Paulina's spaghetti? Oh, for my dead Paulina's body. Paulina's spaghetti? That red sauce getting on everyone's clothes? I'm going to call her and tell no! her what you're saying about Don't her spaghetti. Don't you dare tell her what I said about her spaghetti. Cass, you can't be serious, Strange. can you? I never turned my cell phone off. Battery's fine. Oh. Well. I have a little confession to make. I turned it off because I wanted a few undisturbed moments with you. Got too much to answer. Mm. Yeah, but this will just take a second. Okay. One message. Uh-huh. From Anne. Oh. Surprise, surprise. It's about Charlie. Oh my God, she's in the hospital. What? I No, I'll go with you. 
David, I know that you say that you've forgotten all of this, but there was a time when you did care for me. And we were building a hell of a magazine. And now you say you don't want to have anything to do with me. So I'm leaving and taking my money with me. Without any advance notice at all? I've given you all the advance notice I'm required to give. We were partners. But you and your family have made it abundantly clear I'm not welcome within 500 yards of you. So be it. But what happens to my investment? What am I supposed to do? Just give you carte blanche? Well, I trusted you. Maybe it's time for you to trust me. Don't get me wrong, Miss Corey. This isn't personal. It's business. My money goes where I go. So I either have to work with you or lose the money that you've invested in Brock. I'm a hands-on investor. Okay. Well, you're not giving me too much of a choice. Then we're partners. Again. Which means it's up to you to keep your guard dog out of my way. I don't tell Cameron what to do. If you want him out of your way, then I suggest you stay out of his. Deal? I look forward to working with you. Again. We'll speak soon. Well, how'd it go? You're pretty damn intense over there. Uh, I did it. He's keeping his money in Brava. So where does he go? Nowhere. He's right here. You're gonna work with that creep again? It's either that or the magazine tanks, and that's an option that I'm not willing to take. All right. I'm behind you all the way. I'll be there for every step. Thanks. You guys have fun. Should have told him to take his money and shove it. Believe me, nobody hates the idea of working with David Halliday more than I do. But if I can learn to live with you, you have to at least try. And this is a bloodstone. It's for healing and blood flow and all that good stuff. And, and this is a topaz. A topaz. Right. <laughs> My mom had one like this. It's for skin, knees, and splinters. With a kiss, of course. Yeah. I think sometimes a kiss can heal anything, don't you? And there was a song she used to sing. Sleep, my child, and peace attend me all. Charlie, honey, are you all right? What happened? Hi, Dad. Glad it's here, too. Hey, sweetheart, what happened to you? I'm fine, really. How can you be fine? You're in an emergency room. It was just a stupid fight. A fight? Honey, you don't fight. I do now. Molly Brubaker was getting on my last nerve. <sighs> well, what about? Oh, it was about that newspaper article, wasn't it? I told her to stuff a sock in it, and she wouldn't, so I shoved her, and she shoved me back. Charlotte Frame Winthrop. She was asking for it, Dad. How did you get hurt? I tripped over my shoelace, and I hit my head, and the rest is medical history, but I'm fine now. I spoke to the ER doctor. She was unconscious for a minute. She was? Yes, but uh, they did a CAT scan and everything's fine. They just want to keep her a little while for observation. Looks like the only serious damage she's going to have is a grade-A goose egg on her noggin by morning. Mm. I'm really sorry, Dad. You know better than this. Next time you run, you count to ten, you find a few choice words, but you never, ever get physical. You got me? Gotcha. I'm going to go and... And uh, try to find your doctor, see what's what. Danny, could you? I'll be right back, Peanut. I bet if you didn't get tripped up by that shoelace, you would have given that Molly Brubaker the what for. <laughs> In a heartbeat. <laughs> My girl. I'm glad you're okay, sweetheart. What's going on? It's like Charlie said, I... I thought I made it clear to you. I don't want her confusing you with her mother. I know what you said, but I am not going to apologize for rushing down here to be with her until you showed up. Uh, given the circumstances, I thought somebody should be here. Given what circumstances? Charlie's school called your office. I tried to get through to you, and I couldn't, so I came down here to be with her. You couldn't get through? Why wouldn't you be able to get... Oh, wait, just a minute. You knew! You knew there was an emergency? No! And no. you turned off my phone? 
given any more thought to our wager? Oh. Yes, our wager about how I can learn to live life on the straight and narrow and love it. Yes, I've thought a lot about it. Not a challenge, huh? Oh, I'm up to it if the payoff's good enough. <laughs> Self-respect and self-esteem? Oh, yeah, well, you know, that and a buck fifty won't get you a decent cup of coffee. Try again. Make it interesting. All right, how about a million dollars? This is your chance at a good life. No tricks, no gimmicks, no fakery or feminine wiles. And if I find even so much as one padded bra no. or press-on um, nail... Um, um, one... a million... Um, a million dollars just to be myself? I think you might find it more difficult than it seems. <gasps> oh, sweetie, I have been a lot of things to a lot of people. Nothing. For a million dollars? A million dollars, I could live like a nun and serve soup to the great unwashed in the low rent district. This isn't about money. It's about becoming real. It's about becoming yourself. Mm -hmm. I'm giving you something very few people ever receive. A second chance. A million dollars. <laughs> and I don't have to take off my clothes. Well, um, thank you for brunch. I've got to run, unless there's anything else. No. It's nothing. Let's forget it. It was nice seeing you. Yeah, you too. Dan, would you mind? I need to speak to Lila. Sure. I'll just pop my head in and say goodbye to Charlie. Uh, Kaz, I'm so sorry. What the you hell know? were you thinking? Uh, well, not what you think. Uh, I'll tell you what I think. Anne called to say there was an emergency, and you hung up on her. Yes, that just about sums it up, but she never said anything about Charlie. Because you hung up on her and turned off my phone. Because I thought it was Anne trying to come between us, Kathy. If you were so worried about Anne coming between us, you could have moved in with me weeks ago instead of living the high life with your ex-husband. That is not fair. It was Jordan Stark didn't disappear until recently, and you were so busy with pulling his case. Oh, nice try, nice try. You just got used to the nannies and the maids and living in the lap of luxury, right? And Matt pining away for you. Well, you know... You told me I couldn't have it both ways. Well, neither can you. I chose. Now it's your turn. Who do you really want, Lila? Cass? Charlie wants to see you. Thanks. Tomorrow, on Another World. Excuse me. No, no. I know what you're up to, and you're not going to get away with it. I love you. Marry me again. We'll raise our daughter together. I've got this feeling something's going to happen. Something big. <laughs> <laughs>